today's the day. I'll be picking up the new camper. I'm on my way over there right now, getting the tie downs installed, and hopefully we'll be driving off with it at some point later today. Looking forward to breaking it in and having a new home on the back of this truck. So that pretty much took all day to get the camper and the truck ready to go. I did have to have the local auto body shop install new anchor points for the tie down system for this camper because it is considerably different than what I was doing with the old camper, but it's officially in here and we are good to go. I could not be more excited. I can't wait to show you guys. I am going to be camping this evening just outside of the RV dealer. They suggested that I do that just to test everything out, make sure that everything's good to go before I hit the road. And uh, it is going to be pretty cold tonight as well. 29, I believe, is the low. So I'm going to be using the furnace and just, you know, trying to keep warm in here, trying to stay comfortable. So it's been a couple of days since I picked up the new camper. I've just been moving things basically from inside the cab of the truck into the camper, finding homes for everything, getting things organized. I'm hoping to get back on the road the day after tomorrow. So just trying to get ready. I do wanna show you guys around the new rig, but first I have some business to take care of. We have a bit of a nor'easter swell in the water right now. And normally in New England, when you get a nor'easter swell, it is freezing cold and maybe even snowing outside. But today it is somehow 72 degrees outside, sunny and absolutely beautiful, despite it being mid-November. I gotta take advantage of this. I have tried setting up a shower like that in multiple previous van builds. They have all sucked, but I think I finally got it figured out. That was awesome so to be able to just rinse off after getting out of the water. It was a hot shower as well. Felt pretty nice.
surf ended up being a ton of fun. It is considerably colder today, so I'm gonna try to make this relatively quick, but I wanna show you guys around the new rig. So this camper is actually made by Palomino, which is part of Forest River, one of the larger RV manufacturers in the country. It is a Rogue EA-1. There's a couple of different variations of this, I think four total, and they all sound exactly the same with their model number, so I, I'm still getting it confused. This is actually a, another pop-up camper. There's a number of reasons why I chose a pop-up over a traditional hard-sided option. I'm probably gonna do a future video just about that and the reasons why I chose to go with a pop-up. But that all being said, I do love that it's relatively lightweight. It comes in under 1,400 pounds, which certainly is, you know, clears the payload capacity for this truck. It's a three-quarter ton truck. I believe the payload's about 3,200 pounds. So very, very comfortably rides in the back. It is kind of a unique setup in that the pop top actually goes up at an angle, which is kind of similar to a lot of the overlanding style rigs that are out there but isn't really common with a lot of these other pop-up campers. It was also nice that it's actually available. There's like maybe 10 or 15 of these for sale across the whole country, which is a heck of a lot more than most other truck campers, especially new ones. You got to get on a wait list. It could be 12 months or longer. So I was pretty happy to actually be able to get this one and just get on the road with it. Palomino, I think they were kind of going for like the entry level market with these style campers. The goal was to attract younger buyers who had never maybe had a truck camper before, like me, I guess. And you know, it just kind of has a lot of bare bones features. When I say bare bones, maybe it's bare bones for some folks, but for me, this setup has way more features than anything that I have ever had in the past. And I just wanna just start by listing off some of the things that I really like about it, and that's kinda how I'm gonna show it to you guys. So starting from the outside on the roof, there is actually a Thule roof rack already installed at the factory, so it's not gonna leak, not gonna have to have any issues with it. And I, I really wanted a roof rack. I liked the fact that I could actually maybe expand the solar system up there really, really easily, add some rigid panels to the roof if I need to down the line. I also love that I have a place to put my surfboard safely and comfortably. You know, in the old camper, it was like hanging right over my head as I was like trying to sleep on the lower bunk and I had to constantly be moving it around and stuff. It now has a home. Another thing that I love is the electric jacks on this camper. That was a huge selling point for me. Being able to take this thing on and off easily is going to be pretty nice. You know, if I ever need the pickup truck, say I'm on the property in New Mexico and I got to do something like I'll be able to just pull this thing off, set it aside and then pick it back up later. Could also maybe get a campground for a few days or even a week or two at a time and just have a little home and then be able to have the truck to drive in and go explore and do whatever I want to do. So Really, really excited about that. It takes a couple of minutes to get this thing on and off and I can actually do it on my own. Yeah, I think that classifies as uh, my favorite thing, number three. Actually, it's probably number one if I was ranking these, but they're not really in any particular order. So some of my favorite features about the inside, I gotta say the standing room is wonderful and not just when the top is popped. I mean, when it's up, there's about eight feet of standing room, but when it's down even, I can stand up almost all the way. There's about five foot eight of standing room. So I just gotta kind of bend my neck a little bit, but it's more than enough space to be able to comfortably move around. I do gotta say another thing that I love is this desk setup. It's relatively sturdy. It just has like a removable pole and I can take it and set it aside when I'm not using it. But the best part is that I can use this when the top is down or when the top is up. Next has gotta be the two different bed setups in here. It makes it so that I could probably sleep three people comfortably. So we could have a guest with us on the road or I could have someone join me or a couple of friends whatever it may be. And uh, you know, the upper bunk is pretty nice. It is a, it's a queen size bed, very, very comfortable mattress. I still haven't taken the plastic off yet. I haven't slept up there, but I've laid up there and I, and I can tell that it's gonna be really, really awesome. And then the lower bunk I'll be using when I'm traveling or if I'm trying to stealth camp, which I'm more than likely gonna do. This rig does have quite a bit of storage inside, especially when compared to the EB2 and the EA2 of the Rogue, those different variations. Uh, there's a ton of storage alongside the bed for clothes and I've got all my clothes in there already. And then there's a lower storage compartment here right in front of me. And I've been able to use that for electronics, the drone, just be able to grab things if I need them quickly, if I'm trying to film something. There are two vents up above me. One of them actually has a little fan as well. And this one I believe is pre 
pre-wired for an air conditioner, so I could theoretically add a small air conditioning unit up there if I ever wanted to. Speaking of the ceiling, another favorite feature has got to be this skylight above the upper bunk. It's nice that it lets in the light, makes it feel more open in here. And then another thing that I'm noticing, it's very cold outside, but in here it's been relatively comfortable. It's been up above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think a big reason for that is because the skylight lets the heat in and there are shades so I can cover it and I'll probably do a modification to add some sort of insulation to it in the future. This fridge is by far the largest that I have ever had in any camper setup. It is actually a three-way refrigerator as well. That's the first time that I've ever had a propane powered fridge. It can run on propane, 12 volt and AC. So when I pull out of shore power, I can actually run this on gas, which I'm gonna be doing, I think most of the time. I don't currently have a huge amount of solar on the roof, although I do have a new solar solution, which I'll be sharing with you guys probably in the next video. But yeah, that all being said, like there's a lot of things that run on propane in here between the fridge and the stove and then the on-demand hot water heater that I showed after surfing. And then uh, there's also a furnace in here as well, which has been amazing. I mean, being able to turn this thing on even when it's 29 degrees outside, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It keeps things really cozy in here and it's something that I'm going to be using. You know, in the past, I always just kind of fleed the cold like a crazy person. As soon as it got below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go south, and I would just run away as fast as I could. Now, on the other hand, I can take my time going south. I don't have to rush, and I can flee the cold like a sane person. And my last favorite thing about this camper so far has gotta be at the top of this list, and it's that it's not leaking. The old camper obviously had some issues with water getting on me while I was sleeping in there and stuff and uh, I'm not having to deal with that anymore. I really hope that I'll be able to keep this camper for years to come and have it for a long time and obviously hope that the truck continues to run well as well and it feels nice to have that stability of having a nice home that I can use when I'm on the road and when we are traveling. I'm feeling so grateful to have this new rig and this new setup. And I can't wait to hit the road and start making content and traveling around and hopefully going to some places that I've never been before over the next year. I have quite a bit planned, quite a few things that I want to try to do. And I can't wait to take you guys along on the journey. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, so that you can uh, follow along on these adventures. And for those of you that have been following along all this time, I can't thank you all enough for your support. I, uh, I'm very, very excited about the future. You know, the past, the past couple of weeks have been kind of tough with the old camper and having the issues with that, but things are looking up and I cannot wait to get back out there. I'll talk to you all in the next one.